So once you've actually created <clears throat> what's going to be the interior of your house, it's time to actually start filling it with things. And so we're mostly going to be using the 3D warehouse um, to find things that people have made already and add them to our scene. The goal here is to be realistic, to create a realistic looking place that someone would actually live, um, not to go crazy. Um, so I've started doing the bathroom and the bedroom. I want to cover some of the basics of how to use components and review things like how to move them and how to rotate them. First off, when we want to move something, um, it's by far easier um, if you get it selected ahead of time with the select arrow. You grab the move tool and you'll always have better luck if you go ahead and try to grab one of the corners of the thing. Now, when I want to move something, um, I go one direction at a time. So let's just say that I want to have this bed um, up against this wall. Rather than trying to bring it diagonal um, straight over, um, it might work, but more often than not it's going to try and do something like this um, and it's really hard to, to manage. So what I do instead is I go one direction at a time. So I might bring it down and as soon as I say that I'm on the green axis there, I'm going to hold down the shift key to lock myself in and then I would come over um, this direction. I wouldn't try to go straight there because more often than not that's going to cause a problem. When I want to rotate things, uh, once again I have the thing selected already and I grab the rotate tool. With the rotate tool, basically what you want to do if you're looking at it um, is imagine that you sort of put a spear through the center of this rotate tool um, and then the rotate tool would sort of rotate around that. So if I want to move this bed so that the back of the bed is against the wall I want to have it locked on the ground like this. So once I have it on the ground like this, I'll hold down shift. Um, that's going to stop it from sort of jumping all over the place like it's doing now. So I'll come um, to the center of the bed and I'll click once. That locks the rotate tool down. Then I want to come straight out, either in the red direction or the green direction. It doesn't make a difference which. Um, and click again. And now when I move the mouse, I'm actually moving um, or rotating the bed around that rotate tool just like you had sort of shoved a spear right through the center of it. Um, and usually you're going to want to um, be doing sort of solid angles like 90, 180, 270. Um, right now I'm locked on 270 so I can press enter. Or I can click the mouse rather. Um, and that's rotated. Uh, of course I'm going to need to move it again just to move it back against this board. And once I'm on the red axis I'm going to hold down shift um, just like that. Another review um, is depending on how well these things are made. Sometimes they come out really small, sometimes they come out really large. Um, it all depends on the person who made it. And the scale button here, if you click that, hopefully you'll see these green boxes. That means that the object can be scaled. Um, and typically it makes a lot of sense to grab from one of these corners so that the whole thing scales. Excuse me. If you grab one of these middle ones, you're going to be doing things like making it um, a little too long or too short. So typically you want to grab one of the corners to uniformly scale the object. In terms of some other suggestions, um, one thing you might want to do, um, I'm going to go up to window and do 3D warehouse. That's going to open up this nice large 3D warehouse window which will make it easier to find the thing that I want to find. And let's say for example that I want to find a nice painting for my wall. I'll just search for painting um, and I'll just, I'll just grab one of these they're nice. Let's see, I will grab this one. I'll say yes, load it directly into my model, and you'll see when I click, something's up. Perhaps the person, let me see, aha, so the painting is on the other side. So this would work fine if I wanted it over on this wall over here, but I don't. I want it right here. So once again, I'm going to have to rotate. But we're going to, have to be smart about this. I'm going to go ahead and grab the rotate tool, and I basically want to rotate it the same way I did the bed. So I'm going to lock down on the on the floor, come to the middle of the painting, come out into the green direction, and now I can tell it to rotate. I'll type in 180 degrees, which is just like that and now I'll be able to see it when I put it on the wall. So I'll do one direction at a time and now I'll move it back towards the wall. You're going to see, and this is what I expected to happen, is I've, I put it directly on the wall like this, SketchUp gets a little confused. It doesn't know um, 
the wall and the painting are sort of occupying the same space and things aren't working the way we want to. So what I typically do is I'm going to bring it out in the green direction and I'm going to tell it to come out like 0.1 inches. Just enough really um, that it's no longer occupying that same space as the wall. Um, and now I can see it just fine. The wall and the painting are they're very close to each other but they're not quite the same. I could actually just go ahead and say one inch because this painting does actually have um, a little bit of thickness to it. If it didn't, I would just say, you know, 0.1 inches just so, to move it off of the, the wall. I don't want to see a gap, so I don't want to see this. Same thing if I'm looking for a rug. So let's just go ahead and grab a rug. I'm just going to grab the first one I see. And when I place it on the floor, it's the same thing. The floor and the rug are basically fighting a battle um, for which one's on top, and it's not going to go well for either. So I'm going to go ahead and um, grab my move tool, and I'm going to hop onto the blue direction on the blue axis. And as soon as I do that, I'm good. Now I'm going to type in point one enter. So I'm basically lifting it a tenth of an inch off the floor, which is something that you can't see, um, but makes a world of difference. Um, for making sure that the floor and the rug aren't um, getting in the way of each other. Just to make sure I'm completely clear on the rotate tool. Um, both of the rotations we've done so far have been sort of ones that were flat on the floor. Let's say for example that for some reason this painting was upside down. It's not, but let's pretend it was. And I needed to rotate it so that it was right side up. That's going to be slightly different. Um, so if I grab the rotate tool, um, just from, like I said, remember, imagine that you were shoving a spike through the middle of this rotate tool. Um, that's the way that we're going to rotate it. So if I click on this to lock it down, I come straight out in one of the directions. It's like there was a spike shoved right through the middle, and that's the way it's going to rotate. If instead I were to bring it straight out, and I were to put the rotate tool on this side, Imagine a spike being spiked right through the center of that. That's how it would rotate. So depending on uh, what you what you find and how you move it, um, you might need to do different kinds of rotations to get the things the way you want them to be. I'll finish up by saying that your I'll reiterate that your goal here is to make a realistic looking um, living space. So don't go crazy. Um, don't put things that you wouldn't find in a normal one bedroom apartment. Um, so you are going to need things like bathroom, bedrooms, you need a place to put your clothes, so a dresser, you're going to need um, some sort of probably like a TV couch area, you're going to want a dining area so you're going to have a table somewhere, um, you're going to have all the things in the kitchen that you would need to actually prepare food, so um, probably cabinets, stove, refrigerator, all of those things need to exist here in your home. So as you begin to grab things, um, make sure that you're taking into account all the things the actual human being would need to live in this space. As you can see, I have gone and added almost all the things that you would need in an actual living space. Uh, I've done the kitchen, the living room. I've started to do the floors. So as we pop back into the materials, there are several categories that will work pretty well for us. If you like the idea of hardwood floors, um, the wood category will be great for you because um, there's all kinds of different ones that you can choose from. Um, I happen to like this one. Um, it looks nice. There's also this category for carpets, fabric, leathers, textiles, and wallpaper. And you see I've already chosen one of them for my living room wallpaper. Um, you could also go, if you really want to, to colors. Um, but if you're going to just put a color on the wall, um, like I keep trying to say, don't go nuts. So you're probably not going to have hot pink walls, for example. Um, typically, if you put color on the walls, it's kind of muted. It's kind of um, something something lighter. Um, you don't want to have black paint on your walls, for example. If it turns out that you don't want to have the same flooring all the way out throughout, so for example, you might want to have tile in the bathroom. Right now, it's all connected, um, but we can really easily just separate it by drawing a line from here to here. It's going to put that sort of space back on the door, but that's not a big deal. Um, we're going to go back into the tile category, um, and something like this makes a lot of sense for a bathroom tile. I can then just click on this face that I created and press the delete key to, uh, to lose it. And now I have a different kind of tile in my 
bathroom than I have throughout the rest. I'd do the same thing in the kitchen if I wanted to. Um, maybe have some sort of linoleum looking um, in the kitchen. Um, and having different different flooring, different parts, will actually add to the realism a little bit. So we might put something like that um, in the kitchen. And then I can just click there and delete. So go through, um, decorate. Um, you should have flooring, um, something on the walls. Um, you can also go on the outside and do something on the outside, otherwise it looks, looks kind of incomplete. So go ahead and do that. And at this point, you'll pretty much have a realistic looking uh, living space.